spiders have walked the earth for 380 million years, predating the dinosaurs by a significant margin. As a result of evolution over this massive time scale, there are approximately 45,000 species known to biologists. Spiders are arachnids, a class of exoskeleton bearing invertebrates with two body segments and eight legs. There are two suborders, a tiny group of primitive spiders called the Mesothelae, which account for only around 100 species, and Opistothelae, which constitutes the vast majority of known spiders. Around 94% of all spider species belong to the infraorder Araniomorphae. These are the creatures that humans are most likely to interact with in their homes and gardens. Araniomorphs are typically short-lived and have chelicerae or fangs, whose tips come together when biting. They are sometimes called true spiders. The remaining spider species are the Mygalomorphae. As opposed to their true spider cousins, Mygalomorphs have downward-pointing fangs and can attain significantly longer lifespans. Some have been known to live 25 years or more. The oldest known genus in this infraorder, Rosa Megale, lived around 240 million years ago during the Triassic era, and is the ancestor to the best known members of the Megalomorphs, the Ferrophosidae family, Tarantulas. The first species to bear the name Tarantula wasn't a tarantula at all. It was in fact a large wolf spider found in the area surrounding the city of Toronto, Italy, which is where the term originated. In medieval times, rumors stated that the bite of this spider, known as the Lycosa tarantula, could cause hysteria in its victims, a condition which came to be known as tarantism. While the true culprit was likely the Mediterranean black widow, the reputation of the tarantula lived on. Europeans gradually began to apply the term to any large, hairy, ground-dwelling spider, and the name became increasingly associated with what we today call tarantulas. In modern times, the tarantula is often depicted as a fearsome and dangerous beast in popular media. Many films throughout the years have featured these spiders, often in the context of horror and science fiction, where they have been depicted as monsters and a source of terror. Factoring in the commonness of arachnophobia combined with the large size of some tarantula species, and it's no wonder so many people fear these animals. Tarantulas, however, are relatively inoffensive. They are quite basic creatures with rudimentary brains. To the best of our knowledge, they have no emotions beyond basic instincts. They do not sleep, and they feel no pain. And while some species possess a stronger venom than others, which can lead to a painful and sometimes debilitating bite, no tarantula is known to be lethal to humans. It is worth noting that these spiders are often prey items to larger animals, including human beings in many parts of the world. While some such as the dinner plate sized members of the Theraphosa genus can be quite large, there are also many dwarf species that have a maximum size of just an inch or two. There are more than 1200 known species of tarantula and they are often grouped based on two factors, living conditions and origin. In terms of living conditions, there are tree-dwelling arboreals, the ground-dwelling terrestrials, and the ever-burrowing fossorials, Origin is divided into worlds, where the species that are native to the Americas are known as New World, while those who originate from other areas are known as Old World. Most New World tarantulas have a distinctive defense mechanism which they have evolved to deal with potential threats. On their abdomens are barbed, hair-like, urticating bristles, also known as seti. When threatened, the spider will rub its back legs against the abdomen, filling the air with a cloud of seti which can cause itchy rashes and in extreme cases even eye damage. The irritation caused by the bristles depends on the species as well as the sensitivity of the victim, but it is an effective deterrent against a would-be predator. Because of this mechanism, these tarantulas have little need to possess strong venom and tend to be slower moving. By contrast, the old world species have no urticating seti, 
As a result, they have evolved to be quick moving and are more prone to biting. In addition, their venom can be significantly stronger than their New World counterparts. While none are known to be life-threatening, the effects of the venom are much more pronounced, with some victims reporting severe pain, muscle cramps, labored breathing, and even heart palpitations. As a result, provoking these animals is definitely not recommended. That being said, because their venom is needed for hunting, defensive bites against larger animals such as humans sometimes do not result in envenomation. These are known as dry bites. Despite their reputation for being more docile than old world species, some new world tarantulas can be defensive. Old world species will typically try to run if threatened, but are likely to become defensive when cornered. Before biting, a tarantula will typically, though not always, rear up, raising their front legs and showing their fangs in what is often called a threat posture. This is a Vicularia metallica also known as the metallic pink toe, an arboreal New World species from Colombia. Though she may seem quite terrifying to the arachnophobe, the spiders of the genus of Vicularia tend to be rather docile. That is, unless, of course, you're her prey. The scientific name is Anomen dubium, which means that scientists are unsure if the metallic pink toe is its own separate species or if it is simply a variant of Avicularia avicularia, the generally smaller pink toe tarantula. She is, however, indifferent to her classification, particularly when enjoying a fat, juicy roach. Like nearly all spiders, tarantulas depend on their venomous bite to subdue their prey. Once their food is under control, the spider might engage in what many keepers call a happy dance, where they spin in a circle while laying down webbing. This webbing helps hold the food together while the tarantula eats and keeps it off the ground where scavengers may try to make off with it. The prey is injected with digestive fluids, which liquefy its insides, allowing the spider to suck the juices out. The leftovers are discarded, usually in a neat ball called a bolus. Because they are arthropods and have no internal skeletons, tarantulas must engage in ecdysis or molting in order to grow. Before this happens, the tarantula will enter a pre-molt phase where they may cease to eat and become less active. Their abdomen will typically become enlarged, black, or shiny. Once their exoskeleton no longer fits, the spider flips onto its back and gradually pulls itself out of the old skin. This process is very stressful for the animal and leaves them in a weak and vulnerable state. The old skin, called the exuvia, may be discarded, or the spider may use the moisture in it to hydrate themselves. It can take several days for the new body and fangs to harden, and during this time, the tarantula will avoid hunting. An interesting note about ecdysis is that it can allow the spider to regrow lost or damaged limbs. Tarantulas, like most animals, reproduce sexually. The gender of the animal can be determined in a few different ways. In the first place, females possess a reproductive organ called a spermatheca, which is visible on the bottom of the spider's abdomen, though it can be difficult to make out on certain species. Males have two distinguishing features. On their pedipalps, the arm-like limbs at the front of the spider, they have bulbous tips called emboli, which they use to collect sperm prior to encountering a female. 
They also have spurs or hooks on the tibias of their first set of legs, which they use to hold the female at bay while mating. Mating itself can be a harrowing experience for a male. During the process, the spiders lock legs in a delicate dance, and the male uses his emboli to deposit the collected sperm into the female's spermatheca. Some species breed with relative ease, and each partner goes on their way after the fact. Other species are known for being prone to sexual cannibalism, so a careless or weak male may end up being a meal before he can fulfill his reproductive purpose. As males tend to be less massive than females, and the mating process requires them to reach beneath the female's fangs, one false move can be a recipe for disaster. If the breeding goes well, the female will create an egg sac where she will deposit the eggs. A single sac may contain hundreds of babies, which eventually begin to emerge as eggs with legs. Tarantula keeping has become an increasingly popular hobby. The advent of the internet has allowed keepers to communicate and share tips and guides on species care, and many forums and websites related to tarantulas have been established. Video sharing has brought significantly more attention to spider husbandry, and YouTube channels focusing on the hobby have reached hundreds of thousands and in some cases over one million subscribers. Expos such as the British Tarantula Society exhibition in the UK draw thousands of hobbyists. Because of the large number of species and the relative ease of care for these animals, collecting is considered an intrinsic part of keeping tarantulas. Some keepers may have dozens or even hundreds of specimens. They take up little space, and feeding and watering, while dependent on the needs of the individual species, is often only required once or twice per week. Some types of tarantulas are also known to be particularly hardy and easy to care for. Female specimens are considered more desirable amongst hobbyists, as they have significantly longer lifespans. While males typically only live a few years and die shortly after maturity, the females of some genera such as the Afanopelma can live for more than 20 years. In addition, females are often more massive and attractive to observe, but there are exceptions. It is common for keepers to refer to their spiders by their scientific name as opposed to the common name to avoid confusion. Take for example this Brachypelma vagans, a terrestrial New World species from Central America. She may be referred to by the common name of Mexican red rump, but other species may also be called red rumps in the exotic pet trade, so it is best for one to acquire tarantulas from dealers who know the scientific name of the species. Despite the fact that pet stores often carry tarantulas, it is a bit of a misnomer to call them pets. While some species are docile and can be handled by their keepers, this is not recommended as it can be stressful and harmful to the animal, as well as increase the risk of a bite or hair flicking. Tarantulas do not bond to their human owners and cannot be trained in the way that a domesticated animal might be. They are also, like all wild animals, unpredictable and may have sudden changes in behavior. They would be more correctly referred to as display animals which, similarly to fish, are better off being observed. In the United States and Europe, some specimens may be found for sale for just a few dollars, while rare, difficult to breed, or exceedingly attractive species may cost hundreds of dollars, particularly for a female. Individuals who are new to the hobby should educate themselves extensively before procuring a tarantula. Because they are long-lived, acquiring a specimen is a commitment, even though the care is quite simple. Research on the individual species one is considering is essential. Care should be taken to assure that the correct species is being purchased. For example, the Gramma Stola pulchropes is typically considered a very docile and slow-moving New World tarantula, while a Harpactera pulchropes is a lightning-fast and potentially defensive Old World species. If their genera were abbreviated, one could see a G pulchropes and an H pulchropes for sale and become easily confused if they are not informed on the difference. Due to their speed, stronger venom, and defensive nature, old world species are recommended to experienced keepers 
who have a background in tarantula rehousing, feeding, and maintenance. This is not to say that a newcomer could not care for such an animal, but a careless mistake or oversight could lead to a painful bite or an escape, which are both considered worst case scenarios amongst keepers. This Heteroscoldra maculata, an arboreal old world tarantula, is considered to be amongst the fastest and most defensive of all tarantula species. But within its enclosure, it's harmless, except to a passing cricket. Pteranochylus marinus, affectionately known as OBTs amongst enthusiasts, are attractive, hardy, inexpensive, and easy to care for, traits which make them desirable for a newcomer. In fact, they have even appeared on some online lists of the best beginner species due to these traits. However, their venom is considered to be strong, even by old world standards, and they have earned a reputation in the hobby for being extremely defensive, borderline aggressive. Many specimens go into a threat posture immediately upon being approached, and some keepers have reported being charged by their spider, which can be intimidating for the most experienced collector, let alone a novice. Due to human-related activities such as deforestation and overcollecting, a number of tarantula species are decreasing in population in the wild. As a result, Many in the hobby believe that it is preferable for keepers to seek captive bred spiders to avoid contributing to additional harm. In some areas, laws and regulations have been enacted to prevent or limit the trade of certain species. In the United States, for example, some endangered Sri Lankan tarantulas of the genus Pisolotheria cannot be sold across state lines. While the effectiveness of banning the sale of certain tarantulas is debatable, what is clear is that immediate action is needed to protect the existence of these creatures. As we have seen today, these arachnids are more than just big spiders that stalk the night. They are a sizable group with an amazing diversity of color, size, and behavior. Whether you fear them or love them, there's no denying their impressive nature and due to their role in controlling pests and bringing balance to their ecosystems, there's no denying their important place on our planet. We hope you have enjoyed this brief glimpse into the world of tarantulas. Join us next time on Arachnidox.